Once a month or so, on our past present feature, we listen to some interesting things that have gone out over our airwaves in the over 80 years that WNYC has been broadcasting. Today's is an interview with Harry Houdini's brother, Theo Hardeen, that we found in our vaults. The excerpt is from the radio show Voice of the Theater, hosted by Ezra McIntosh. It aired originally on July 3rd, 1939. And now, our mystifying guest, Theo Hardeen. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Hardeen. I didn't know you were sitting there. I've been sitting here all the time you were talking, Mr. McIntosh. Oh, now, wait a minute. <laughs> that, that chair was empty and the door to the guest room closed. How did you get in here? Why, I'm the man that walked through brick walls. <laughs> I see. Well, I suppose I should have anticipated that. You are the late Harry Houdini's brother, aren't you, Mr. Hardeen? That's right. When we first started on the stage... Houdini and I used to work together as the Brothers Houdini. Well, tell me this. Harry Houdini certainly performed some miraculous feats in his time. I remember seeing him handcuffed and soldered into a boiler by the workmen of the Toledo Boiler Works. Then he was lowered into the Maumee River, and in about three minutes he came to the top, free of the boiler and free of the handcuffs. How the dickens did he do that? Well, if I told you the trick, you'd be able to do it yourself. And there wouldn't be any more mystery about it. <laughs> no, thanks. I wouldn't care about trying it myself. I might forget the combination. But is it true that Harry left all his secrets to you when he died? That's right. With a stipulation in his will that at my death, they shall be burned and destroyed. Might I ask the reason for a stipulation of that kind? I'm afraid that would take a long time to explain, Mr. McIntosh. I see. Well, were you also interested with your brother in spiritualism? To some extent, yes. I don't believe in it. Harry and I had a speech code. That was only known to two of us. I've attended seances and spiritualistic meetings, and up to the present time, have never received messages from him. Well, to get back to your present engagement in Hell's Apartment, you do most of your act with Olson and Johnson, don't you? That's right. I do a levitation act with Johnson in which I make him rise in the air and disappear. Yes, I've, I've heard a lot about that. How is that done, Mr. Hardeen, if you don't mind my asking? Oh, it's very simple when you know how. It's the same principle I use in the one where they tie me up and place me in a trunk. Then when they open the trunk again, Johnson's in, in it instead of me. <laughs> That's the same principle, you say? Exactly. I could give you a rough idea of it. If you've got a rug around here and a good-sized packing case. Well, no, I'm afraid we haven't got a rug in the studio. Of course, after you've learned the first principle, the important thing to remember is always to hold your audience's attention. Keep them watching you. Yes, but I don't think you made that first principle quite clear, Mr. Hardy. It's the same illusion we use when we bring on sarcophagus containing the mummy of Cleopatra. And after a few passes, Cleopatra changes to Mrs. Johnson. I see. Well, it certainly sounds like a simple principle, but I guess I must be just a little bit dull this evening. There's really nothing in it. All you have to do is to study legerdemain from childhood, practice illusions for about 30 years, read up on mystics of the Orient, and dabble a bit in physics and chemistry, and then you're all set to go. <laughs> well, I'll get right at it. But joking aside, there's been so much uncanny mystery surrounding the performances of your brother and yourself that many people have come to think there is something occult or supernatural about it. That isn't possible, is it? No, of course not. Every trick and illusion has a simple, though often rather complicated, explanation. You see, there are a lot of gentlemen in my profession who spend their lives thinking up ways of fooling you, so it's pretty hard to understand sometimes just how they do it. I've noticed that. And, of course, there are tricks that even the professionals can't explain. They're just peculiar to certain individuals. But once you know how they're done... I know. They're, they're, they're comparatively simple. Well, thank you very much for being with us this evening. We appreciate it. Well, Mr. Hardeen. <laughs> well, he seems to have disappeared, folks. But I'm, I'm sure you enjoyed hearing him, and we appreciate his courtesy in appearing on this program and disappearing all too soon. <laughs> Thank you. 
And that was Harry Houdini's brother, Theo Hardeen, on today's Past Present feature, not exactly forthcoming with any of the secrets about his or his brother's stunts or feats of escape. Our thanks to WNYC archivist Andy Lancet and his 